G'day everybody, Glenn and Ben here from the Good Movie Monday podcast, coming to you with another Lucky Dip video, Sans, Sam, Sam's not with us, but um, I reckon um, next year she'll be back, we, um, we're just about out of out of space for the roster on the rest of the videos and, and episodes for the year. All up with content, baby. We've got content coming out of the wazoo. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is my wazoo, will the screen let me show it? No. Oh, there, there we go. go. There you go. See, there's movie titles in there. We're going to pluck one out and not talk about it. We'll probably go on some kind of tangent. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> yep. Inner Space. Inner Space. This is a movie I adore. I'm sure you adore it too. Look, I haven't oh, seen it since I was a kid. Wow. But it's a movie that um, I went back to probably... I don't know, six months ago for the first time in maybe five or six years. I used to watch it a lot, but it's been a long time since. And It was on TV I, not too long ago too. Yeah, it is a different film than I remember it being, having, having watched it recently. And it's the second half of it I found a lot more laborious this time. Yeah, right. All of those hundreds of times I've watched it before. The stuff where, you know, you got the, um, oh, Jesus, I've lost the track of his name. What's the bad guy's name? From oh, um, uh, Robert Picardo. No, no, no. The um, the older, the guy from, no, the guy from UHF that plays the TV boss. Um, he's in Piranha. I can't remember his name. Oh fuck. People, he, oh, people are gonna. Kill I can only remember. Anyway, the, I'll do a, I'll do a thing. You'll there. know. It. Yeah, you'll know. You'll know him. Anyway, the second that he gets shrunk along with his sort of you know henchwomen, um, it just gets stupid and a little bit far fetched when they're doing road car chases and shit like that and. I liked the stuff that was all inside the body, the adventure that was inside yeah. the body, because it's, it's basically the Fantastic Voyage, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I was going to say it's a. Uh, was it Kevin McCarthy? Yes, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin yeah. McCarthy, who is not the father of Andrew McCarthy, which I no. thought he was. I thought one hundred percent Andrew McCarthy's father. He is not. Well, the the moment he gets shrunk down to midget size with his mistress and and some other villain um yeah, no, just gets a, yeah it just gets a bit bit silly for my liking and it just sort of dragged on a bit but you know that's not to take away from the fact that it's a joe dante film i love it nevertheless i forgot that aussie Vin, uh, vernon wells is in it i was about to say that vernon wells is the um the bad guy look he's almost like a terminator bad guy he's got the, the hook hand and he can replace yeah. his hand with a gun and you know it's like a bond villain almost it's great it's perfect and wendy There's, sharp from uh, the burbs I, yes, I remember. Um, I remember Vernon Wells in it popping the balloon of the kid in the mall. <laughs> like the kid is just like <laughs> devastated. <laughs> I kind of wish they'd make adventure movies like that these days. You know, I guess we've got the new Honey I Shrunk the Kids reboot coming, but they don't. They don't make this brand of adventure. I guess Ghostbusters Afterlife is a little bit. I guess is as close as 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 we've got at the moment. But I'm kind of talking like high adventure. Like I think the last thing you could compare to was maybe not that it was that great, but Journey to the Center of the Earth with The Rock. Yeah, um, or the holes as a, as a like a film with kids. But yeah, I guess yep. Jungle Cruise was supposed to be that film. Yeah, I suppose so. I just I'd like a lot more of them. I think we're so saturated with superheroes. I'd like to see a return of this kind of movie. And you know, yeah. just uh, I guess it's just me being nostalgic or whatever. But I mean, we had anyway. Christmas Skull. That was supposed to be that. <laughs> I um I won a coloring competition at my video store and won an inner space um pair of sunglasses, but it was just a green piece of cellophane with rubber straps stapled to the side. And as a kid, I thought it was the best, but in in retrospect, I was just wearing cellophane around my face. Yeah, <laughs> like three D glasses, like the old school three D glasses. Oh, like, it was it was tackier than that though. And then you look at them now, and you're like, ooh. Did you remember like all those movies set in the fifties and they've got one kid in the group on a bike that wears the three D glasses? Yeah. <laughs> Genius. It's, just, it's like to signify the era. I would do that now. If I was making I've, a short film now, I would have someone wearing three D glasses. Do you, do you remember when the the resurg the resurgence of um three D came back on D V D, but before it was like the um the grey ones, it was the still the red and the green or the red and the blue. Yeah. You know, and DVDs came with one of those inside it. I actually invested in like four pairs of real glasses like these, but with the green and the red tint, yeah, which right. I still got somewhere because I thought I am so invested in this technology. I'm having my own pair of glasses that I can take with me if I want, you know? Yeah. 
And I do have a box somewhere full of all the paper ones that I collected from all the collections I've purchased. <laughs> Night, Nightmare on Elm Street glasses, Friday the 13th glasses. Like all of them. Yeah. When I kill 3D glasses, <laughs> you know, that's just shot in duo vision. <laughs> coming, coming at you. Coming at yeah. you. Yeah. I've got right here. Uh... Where is it? Oh, this makes nah. looks through his DVD collection. I literally just picked it up. Where is it? <laughs> is that it? I can't read the title. No, that's the masturbating gunman. Wrong. <laughs> oh well. I just got it. I just got it. That that three D adventure coming at you. Oh Where's mate. It? I can't find it. I'm oh. um. <laughs> Literally, the entire movie is stuff coming at you. Well, that's awesome. That is awesome. No, what is it? Is it just a documentary? That's a. Um, I'll read you the back here. Tragedy strikes as two ruthless brothers kidnap a bride during her wedding. Hurt and angry, H.H. H. Hart begins his quest to find the love he lost and take vengeance upon the wicked. The film features many 3D effects, many of which are intended to fly off the screen at the audience. So yeah, basically they discovered the technology. Excellent. Well, that was a tangent and a half. Would you like to um, dip into your lucky dip? Uh, yes, sure. Fifth Element. Oh, we've done that to death recently. Oh, is that what it is? I couldn't read it. <laughs> That's a pretty fat riding, I've got to say. It's, yeah, I, I used a texter. It did not work. Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. I think, did we talk about that in uh, in British Crime? Okay. Yeah, and I think um, at one point I made a reference to Mona Lisa Smile, not realising, like, and then realised afterwards we're talking about a different movie. Monkey shines. Monkey, Monkey shines. Monkey shines. There we go. What a great film. Indeed. It, Love uh, it. Features early early appearances from um, Janine Turner from Cliffhanger and Northern Exposure, and yep. Stanley Tucci with hair, who is the Doctor, and uh, oh, um, what's his name too? Um, Cousin Ira from Mad About You. John Pankow. <laughs> is in it and um steven root as well it's got a great cast i love me some steven root mate and i forgot that stanley tucci was in this so i need to really go back and watch it. it's probably yeah. been about 10 years at least maybe 12 since i've watched it it's been it's been a while for me too but it, it, it actually i think it's my i think it's my favorite george romero film wow because i i used to like um it was always this between this and link for me like and i always liked link that little bit more um, well, it does have a horny monkey in it. Like that's right. <laughs> orangutan, is it, or is it gym? orangutan? Yeah, yeah. Orangutan in a in a literally in a monkey suit. <laughs> but um, yeah, monkey shines. It did freak me out a bit as a kid. I discovered George Romero very young. Uh, I think I've told that story to you before, where I accidentally purchased the Document of the Dead documentary, thinking it was like Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, right. And, but that was my introduction to like, you know, George Romero. But from that, I guess it educated me enough to go out and seek, you know, his work. And Monkey Shines, I think, and Night Riders were the two that I latched onto first. Yeah, right. Night Riders, yeah. I mean, Night Riders is, is an interesting film. Hmm. Uh, not kind of, I don't know if it is exactly what you uh, expect. Uh, but Monkey Shines is definitely what you expect. Like, there's no, yeah. you know. <laughs> It's funny, like you said that it's your favourite Romero film. Um, it's I, I think my favourite Romero film is not one of the Living Dead ones or you know, the Walking Dead ones. I think it's probably Dark Half with uh, Timothy Hutton. Yeah, right. I reckon, because that's just... I've never that's seen a, Dark Half, actually. I've real, got it somewhere, but... Uh... It's a real mind trip and probably the most underrated of all the Stephen King adaptations. It's just so good. Yeah, right. And yeah. Prove, that proves that Timothy Hutton's a good actor. I've always liked Timothy Hutton, like the <laughs> girls and stuff. And then now he's uh, he's hitting he's hit that stage now where where Tom Cruise Tom Cruise has done a, a magnificent job of avoiding, but of that 
when you look like you're young for such a long time and then you still look young but you look like like you've done a lot of drugs young rather than (laughs) actually than your actual age did you just drop in um beautiful girls is that what i heard yeah oh how good's that i that was for for a very short period of time that was my favorite movie of all time yeah no definitely um beautiful girls is fantastic i think it was is that the is that I can't remember if that was made before or after. Um, must have been after The Professional. After, because Natalie Portman was discovered from The Professional, where she was like, what, she's nine, eight or nine, and then Beautiful yeah. Girls, I think she's 12. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, but, um, still, that's a, it's, it's, it's a little bit creepy, but it's it's still yeah. really like um, poignant and really sort of, you know, touching. And they, ha- they have that great bit, like it does teach you the rules of watching Rich Man, Poor Man. You have to watch it on TV all the way through. <laughs> You can't watch it on tape. But like, what happened to Max Perlich? Like, he was great in that. And well, everyone, Mar- Rappaport, Martha uh, Plimpton. Is, is Martha Plimpton? Yeah, that's right. Like, it's it is a. I, I even mm. like Rosie O'Donnell in that, and that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a re- it's a good movie about coming home. It's a really yeah. good movie about coming home. Who played the dad? Do you remember when he comes home, like Timmy Hutton's dad? I can't remember. Such it's an ensemble cast. Me too, and I'm thinking maybe that was like a famous actor that we didn't discover until after seeing it, because you know yeah. that kind of cast, you'd imagine it might be someone like a, like in today's world, it'd be Richard Jenkins or someone like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, or it's <laughs> it's like um, what's the name? The dad from Frasier. Yeah, his name I can't remember now. Yeah, um, John. It's, it's John something or another. Yeah, but yeah, and <laughs> it's kind of like um, oh, what was the other one I had in my mind? Then I've lost it. Oh, never mind. It's gone. Um, anyway, monkey shines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it's what lucky dips. About a man who gets paralyzed and gets a service monkey that feeds off his uh, darker thoughts and starts killing people for it. Which, when you describe it like that, that's a bit like that Aussie movie that got released through Umbrella recently. Street Talk, was it? No? The one about the computer, where the guy gets a service computer. Yeah, right. Oh, I haven't seen that one. I thought, but isn't Street Talk? No, Street no, Talk. What's the one with the? Uh, what's the one with uh, Superman in it and Kathy and the mum from Picket Fences? Oh yeah, I, that Street. might be it. Hang on, I'm gonna cross talk, cross talk, cross talk. Ah, yeah, cross talk. Oh, the Aussie one. Yeah, the Aussie one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I don't know. This this the summary you just gave of Monkey Shine sounds like the plot. <laughs> Cross talk. Anyway. Cross talk. Whatever. Should we do one more? Sure. All right. Pulling out the big guns here. Oh. <laughs> well, from beautiful girls to... Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh. Dun, 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 What a movie. Um... Another the bees, that, the bees. Another movie they just don't kind of make these films for kids anymore, where they really challenge a kid's emotional um, fortitude. For me, this was it was a big awakening for me. This film because it was the first time I realized that Dan Aykroyd was now old and fat, and fat, but yeah. old was the main yeah. thing. You know, <laughs> well, I think Driving Miss Daisy proved that he was fat. Yeah. I mean, I, but to be honest, I hadn't watched Driving Miss Daisy until until um, I started until until I started working on um, Breaker Morant with for Umbrella. Yeah. On the extras for that, that I was like, I better go back and watch all of Bruce Beresford's other films. And I finally went, All right, I'll watch Driving Miss Daisy. I'll get it out of the way, and I, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my it made girl, me feel like good about being white, and it made me feel good <laughs> about. About uh, black people. <laughs> especially the ones that have drive you around. Yeah, especially the the ones that work for. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> That's, what a terrible thing to say. Um, anyway, uh, my is girl... It, is, is Driving Miss Daisy... <laughs> driving Miss Daisy less or more offensive than Green Book? That's a great question. I think... They're on par with each other. I think Green Book Green Book tackled issues a little bit more, whereas 
um, I guess Drive Miss Daisy's Daisy, intention was to no, the Drive Miss Daisy I think tried to bridge the gap. It tried to you know bring the races together in a uneducated kind of way. Yeah, I mean it, it was well intentioned. Yeah, <laughs> for its time. For its time. <laughs> Whereas my girl, um, uh, just beautiful film like oh Jamie Lee Curtis, like she was Jamie Lee Curtis, Anna Chomsky. That's uh, right. That's you know that's where she came from, and then she would go on to appear when she got and she got older and stuff. She's in Gold Diggers with Christina oh, Ritchie, and uh, what a movie Gold Diggers is! Absolutely, Gold Diggers is, speaking of high adventure. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of those Gold movies Diggers I'm talking about. One of those. Not, um, not to be mistaken for National Lampoon's Gold Diggers. Yeah, and then she's in. Um, she's got a great couple of parts yeah. in um, Thirty Rock. Yeah, which I think then I think after that she ended up being in. Is she in Veep? Yeah, like she um she turned character. into the kind of woman that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Smoke comes out of your ears when you look at, and you get yeah. these. She, into, <laughs> she grew up and turned into Lisa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to animate the mask here, but I can't quite yeah. do it with a green screen background. You should, I mean, that's what you should be able to do. Like, it should be a like a <laughs> you know on, on Messenger when you've got the little animation effects. The kid and you like you should be able to push yeah. it. And it should be Disney uh, mm-hmm. or the Warner, the Warner Brothers Wolf. Oh, my <laughs> eyes! Not only do my eyes come Ooh. out, they go. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you like my girl too? That's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't remember anything about My Girl 2. I did watch it at the time. I was very excited when it was coming out. I watched it, but now I couldn't, I don't really know too much about, I, I don't remember too much about either film, except that Anna Chomsky is not is not wrapped in um, Dan Aykroyd getting it on with Jamie Lee Curtis and What's and that Macaulay Culkin dies of a bee sting. That's that's really what I remember of My Girl. I don't remember anything about My Girl too because Macaulay Culkin's already dead. You're like, where's the film then? Well, my um, you know, my love for number two sequels notwithstanding, I think that what I like about My Girl too is that it's a different kind of movie because she's a bit older and it's a different coming of age story, and it's the one where she discovers boys. So I think she gets sent away to her uncle's for the summer break, and working for her Ooh. uncle, I think it is is a um. Yeah, that's a good question. It's uh, let's, you'll know. Let's IMDb this this beige. This yeah, beige. but um, so she falls for a boy, and it's the whole that's the summer of love, oh. the summer of discovery, and it's just a different kind of film. But it's it's I think it's equal. I think it's a it's a rare case of an equal sequel. Yeah, right. Who's the boy? Is the boy? It's not Devin Sawyer, but it's one of those kind of um. I don't think he's gone on too much, but he had that look. He had that uh, Austin O'Brien. I've never heard of, but yeah. Oh. Say no more, my friend. Richard Mass is in it. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he's the uncle. He's the uncle. Gotta watch he, it. Gotta, I mean, Dan, Dan Aykroyd yeah. does have the book ended cameos, but Richard Massa takes over for that role, that that type. Yeah, right. And yep. plus it also features the the uh the sexiest woman alive in nineteen ninety one, Angelina Ball from the commitments. She's the, the blonde. The blonde. Uh, I love her. Uh, absolutely amazing, and she's in it. Yep. She's and you got here at Graham Beef. Beef ben Stein. Beef from uh, Phantom of the Paradise is in it. <laughs> it's a good ben cast. Stein, ben Stein. Oh, Rick, Charles Fleischer. I forgot about that. He's in there. <laughs> oh, and Kieran Young. Yeah, right. Who's uh? Mate, we're going to have to have a movie night and watch our house and My Girl 2. <laughs> we're going to have to do a double, My Girl and My Girl 2. And then oh. uh, no, we'll have to make it a mini marathon and do Gold Diggers after that. A Klumpski fest. A Chumsky fest, yeah. We should do it on the Christmas show. <laughs> that should be the Christmas show. <laughs> Getting all Klumsky on people's asses. Yeah, anyway. Uh, that's Klumsky. good. Klumsky. Oh, you just re- you remind... It's Klumsky, I think. You reminded me of Angeline Ball and... um. Sir, how I've dare always you. loved Angeline Ball. I cannot She's get amazing. enough of the commitments, mate. I, I, to the point where I watched, I watched, and the entire 
first, so the entire first season, or maybe even second season of uh, Doc Martin, because she's in. She, she's in something recently, and she just did it for me. Let me just have a look what it is. Hang on, this is riveting for people at home. Um, she's done quite a bit. I can't find what it was. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to have to IMDB this shit because I'm right now on Wikipedia, which is not as reliable. I could, I could have sworn she played a mum, which is, you know. We'll fast forward this part. Where who? Where Angeline Ball played a mum? Yeah, I'm trying to think what it was. She was in that. Do you remember The General, which was that where the two, there was the Hollywood version. And Brendan Gleeson? Yeah. That's Brendan Gleeson where he's playing the criminal with two two wives. Yep, and they're yep. both, both the wives are from the commitments. It's Angeline Ball and uh, um, I can't remember who. What's the what's the other woman's name? Um, Maria Doll Kennedy is the other is the other wife, and then um, Kevin Spacey did the version did a version of it, yep. which was an ordinary decent criminal. Yes, that's right. Yep, uh, which was exactly, and they came. It, was, it wasn't like. Like a Deep Impact and uh, Armageddon, which were similar <laughs> similar films that came out close together. These are, these are like exactly the same story, and they're like that was before they realised that oh, that's right, films are just because you make a film in the UK, I will still get to see it you know, internationally. So you know, it's like they made they remade it before the original came out. Hollywood remade it before the original came out. Uh, ah, dearie. Alrighty, well, I think that's a good lucky dip video. Good way to end it. Um, I can't remember the fucking thing I saw her in recently, but... um, uh, Angelina Ball. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can't find it in IMDb, but there was something where she had like a cameo as maybe a Hollywood starlet or something. I can't remember that. Yeah, right. I'm just having a look at Ordinary Decent Criminal because I can't remember who the wives <laughs> were. Who were the two wives in this one? Is it uh, Linda Fiorentino... And maybe Helen Baxdale, Baxendale. It's amazing that it's funny that in the in the UK one, the women get higher credit. They're more um, central characters. By the way, everybody that's watching, uh, this is just how a general conversation with Better Myself goes. After we stop recording, this is going to just keep going. <laughs> it just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. All right, mate. Um, I'll catch you on whatever the next <laughs> round is.